Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Welcome to Drinking Bros. We've got a special guest on the show today. I, I, in my opinion, you're one of the best like up and coming sports announcers in the business. We got Gary Sheffield Jr. on the show. How are you, man? I'm great, man. Thanks for having me. Um, I didn't realize I was one of the up and comers, but shoot. Yeah. I appreciate it. It's you. you look I mean, like you're four I, years old. Yeah, you do look. You you look young. You look like R. Kelly might be looking after, looking out for you. So yeah, uh, he might be. You got to be careful. Just make sure you wear those face shields that people are wearing in public right now. Might come in handy. Uh, you, Ben Verlander, really good as well. There's a lot of young uh, 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 writers and Talents content creators. There, yeah. yeah, in the in the sports world right now, it's very exciting to see. To be honest, because I'm tired of these old ass people. We bitch all the time about. The baseball writers association of america and why these uh-huh. ner- why these nerds who have never played the sport in their life get to decide who is and isn't a hall of famer like your dad for example with 509 home runs it's fucking wild to me that these geriatric obese turds can decide who is and isn't worthy of the hall of fame drives me nuts it's yeah it's really sad i i, I don't know i'm not exactly sure what you can do because we've always talked about well should the players vote or should they try to come up with some objective Mm. way to get in which there used to be they used to be okay you're close to 3,000 hits that used to matter Mm. 500 home runs used to really matter and then all of a sudden some of the guys they don't like especially in the media they started to eclipse those numbers and now they can't stand those numbers now they don't matter now we have analytics we have war all this made up Mm. stuff so it's obviously really frustrating for some of the guys that have worked really hard yeah, I like uh, – that's why I like the new crop of guys like you. Uh, 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 Alex Monaco is another good one. He's really good. Uh, I don't know if you're uh-huh. familiar with him, but he's a, he, does, he runs a, a really good gambling show on Colin Coward's network. Super funny yeah. guy. Uh, and and uh, it, it's – look, man, we, you got to have new blood in there sometimes. People are tired of hearing Joe Buck. Uh, you know, th- thank, right. God, thank God Tim McCarver is, is no longer – uh, doing these games either because I nobody I, I Smoltz is good right we all like he's Smoltz. okay I, uh, look he's yeah. okay he he's I mean but he knows the game and he's not he he doesn't have an adversarial relationship with the players I feel like a lot of these guys like McCarver was pretty disliked by the players you know what I mean and that's not a good position to be in if you're if you're the host of all the particularly the playoff games and stuff like that like how are you building rapport the way players talk to people like Tim Kirchin and, and Peter Gammons versus the way they talk to to, right. to, to like uh, uh, you know to uh, McCarver, for example, night and day difference, and you get much better content. I mean, remember all the content that that Peter Gammons used to make with baseball players. He was one of my favorite all time human beings just because of that. I, yeah. grew, I grew up watching that dude. dude. Baseball is just so freaking stupid right now because they're they're busy trying to accommodate to older fans. It's like the older fans aren't carrying the game you have to find a way to get this game to grow and Mm -hmm. right now nobody that's my age i'm 27 i know you can't tell but nobody that's 27 years old wants to walk away from netflix and go sit down and Mm. spend whatever they're spending i mean you you can't it's not affordable to pay for these games so you're not going to see it on tv um they don't have any type of partnership with say netflix i mean it would to me it would be a great option for them to partner with netflix and try to get their networks out there and on a platform that kids are already on because how many kids my age right now are moving into apartments that even have TV? They really don't. Right. A lot of them are just getting rid of it completely, watching Netflix and Rob Manfred just acts oblivious because the owners are making money. He's really just a lawyer for the, for the, oh, yeah. for the owners and yeah. they're doing great. He's, so, he's, I mean, it really just sucks. He's Roger Goodell 2.0. I mean, the, the NFL is a little oh, bit yeah. different because they actually, uh, he, Goodell actually works for the owners and not for the league, right? That's a weird setup right. over there. But for Manfred, he, it may as well be like that. We were talking about it uh, yesterday, uh, myself and Hot Bob over here were talking about uh, Manfred and how he's just completely full of shit. Like, yeah. for, for the last year and a half or so, particularly after Verlander called him out last year about the, ju- the quote-unquote juiced ball, which really it's just a more tightly wound ball with a, with a, right. better, with a better center. Uh, but anyways... <clears throat> He was like, oh, no, we've, nothing has been done to the ball. And then this year he comes out and says that they're, we're going to intentionally deaden the ball. Like deaden it from right. right. If it wasn't juiced, then how are you deadening it, man? You guys are full of shit. Right. Yeah, they just say that we got more efficient with how we made the baseball. I'm like, no, you're stupid. <laughs> like we're, we, know what we're, we know what we're watching. I can see a guy hit a ball to right field and the ball will go out. I'm like, well, did he hit that ball like Manny Ramirez used to? Mm. No. Nope. 
And yep. so if that's happening, I'm not going to, I'm not going to watch that. I'm watching guys be rewarded for shitty swings. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and, and and do you think it's dying? And if so, can baseball be saved at this point, um, other than steroids? Because I think if everyone was on steroids, you would have right. a, a fun experience, like the late '90s with McGuire and Sosa. Right. And well, like, there's no, there's no, crazy. there's no phrase, Ross, that uh, chicks dig the strikeout. No, chicks <laughs> dig the fucking long ball, motherfucker. You know what I mean? We, like I, yeah. again, Bob and I were talking about it yesterday. The MLB right now, they're trying to do stuff like the 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 seven inning double headers, uh, the starting with the runner on second and, and uh, extra innings and things like that to try to speed the game up. But are most games being slowed down by extra innings or is it because the game itself is slow? If your premise is, by the way, if you have a product and you, you realize that the fans don't like your product, the customer doesn't like your product, and your solution mm -hmm. is just to simply offer less of the product, that is a failed business model. You are fucked if you're doing that. You know what I mean? Make the, it game, is. make the game more exciting. No, That's baseball's failing. Yeah, baseball is failing for sure. And the sad part about it is what was great about baseball is what society fails at the most right now. We, we, if we see an article and we think something about it, we're not going to click it and take the time to watch it develop. We're not going to do any of that. If we start a TV show and it's slow in season one, everyone says it's shitty, they turn it off. Right. And that's baseball. You'll turn it on the first two innings. You're like, this is a boring game. And then next thing you know, you look up and there's a perfect game. Mm. Well, that's something that's beautiful that this generation is not going to enjoy. So baseball has to find a way to to cultivate an audience without doing it the classic way, because their classic way is not working with this group. My age group doesn't give two rips about stuff that develops and right. stuff that takes time. They like watching basketball where people are running around and there's there's a play every two seconds. So well, it, they're in a bad spot. Besides the Netflix option, um, what do you recommend? Because I'm uh, just to be honest with you, I'm a Hollywood guy. I know that is yeah. not going to happen. Amazon no. currently has a deal with the NFL, and they're struggling to get viewers. Yeah. And Disney slash watch ESPN, over on, Disney slash yeah. ESPN owns that MLB TV app too now, right? So all that it's a it's a conglomerate that controls all of those fucking outlets. So what do right. you, what do you do? They're in trouble. Really? I mean, the, 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 I don't know what you can do to sell this product because in the end, maybe baseball is not this generation's game. Mm. It, it's like, it's like a fanny pack, right? Like, I, I don't know. I don't know what to tell baseball and what you can do. I know you can always add a DH and, and let's get some more offense in there, but there's more offense in the game now than there ever was. There's mm. a, there's more home runs, a home run and a half a game. And I know even if it's the equipment, Half the fans don't even know what the difference between a juice baseball and a regular baseball is. They're just turning on the game and they watch a bunch of home runs. And it's really the style of the game that's awful. People enjoy action. They want to see a ball go in the gap and there be a double cut and a play and a guy get run over at the plate. Mm -hmm. You don't see that anymore. No. Now you see either the ball goes into the seats or you see Joey Gallo strike out five times. And there's nothing <laughs> wrong. He's a great player. Yeah. But that sucks. That product is garbage. Yeah, and I don't want to watch eight Joey Gallos. To be quite honest with you, no. I'm yeah, me neither. Those. No, and and let me ask you this: as a bigger overall question, Gary, why are ratings down across the board in sports, except for like UFC? UFC seems right. to be getting it right, but you know, I was really, really shocked when I looked at the rating yeah. for the Super Bowl when you had yeah. Brady versus Mahomes, the greatest matchup you could ever pray for, and then Brady beats Mahomes in that. And that's the lowest rated Super Bowl in 15, 20 years. Is it sports in general that kids aren't interested in watching anymore? Or is, there, is it something else? Because I can't figure it out. Baseball, I can figure out. Um, because it's boring right. as shit. Even going to the game in person has become boring. Everything's netted in. I can't even catch a foul ball with my kid anymore. Um, you know, there's a limit on beers at some of the stadiums. And you can't limit a guy like me. But is, is sports in general just not this generation's thing because the ratings keep going down across the board except for ufc right i think that the owners and the commissioners underrated how our parents bring us into these games mm. usually our parents are walking us into these sports for the most part people that are baseball fans they call themselves a fan of a certain team usually their dad's a, f a fan of the exact same team and they walk them into that process well when sports went into politics and you start seeing parents get ticked off and they're not like, maybe you don't like the political angle you're 
your organization is taking mm. well now <laughs> that parent is no longer going to walk their kid because now you feel like you're almost evangelizing your kid politically by even bringing them into that that sports realm right so, so you're i mean you're seeing the nfl say black lives matter which they never did and then go figure a couple months later it all gets started and they're like well the ratings are going to be great and then you show up and half the people are pissed off that you even took the stance you took so I think a lot of it is politics. And then plus we just had a pandemic and people are starting to figure out that maybe I can entertain myself in ways that I, I wasn't before. Yeah. I mean, that should be good though. I mean, that is, that's, uh, that's capitalism. When, when you expose a flaw in your system, you know that you need to make a better product. That's an opportunity right. to make a better product. Now on the poli mm -hmm. before we move into more about baseball, since you brought up the politics thing, uh, Zlatan Ibrahimovic had some things to say yesterday about LeBron James yeah. and his, his so-called activism. Now, LeBron's one of the few guys yeah. that has actually put his money where his mouth is. I, I personally rant about this all the time. We have a, we have mm -hmm. a separate political show uh, that the only color that really matters is green and that economic equality is the only thing that's ever going to solve any of this bullshit. So LeBron, right. LeBron's spending his own money on, on helping people get educated and moving into the entrepreneurial world is mm -hmm. that for, for all the hate he gets, that right there yeah. buys back everything for me. I don't give a shit about right. the rest of it. But... Not a lot of people are doing that. And, you know, like you said, well, there's two parts of this. One, this is an entertainment industry, right? People want to be entertained. Mm -hmm. They're not here to get preached to or whatever the fuck. They're here to get entertained. Right. So that means, one, you have to put the best product on the field. And if that means getting out of the way of the players and letting them have fun and do what they want and be exciting. I mean, what's more exciting? The fucking... Princeton uh, uh, teams from the early 2000s with their back cuts or Steph Curry shooting from 30 fucking feet. Obviously, Steph right. Curry shooting from 30 feet is the better option. So I don't understand why in baseball specifically, the league continues to box people out. Like if you're a manager at a big company and you're setting rules to lower morale, prevent workers from doing well and setting records and having fun, your business is going to fail, man. That's just how it is. There's no, it is. There's no motivation for these younger players to do anything. And that's why when, when people like uh, Tatis Jr., and, and some of the other younger players that are that are like uh, uh, Acuna, Acuna is a little bit like it too. When, when yeah. they when they show a lot of excitement on the field, people are like, "Oh, you're disrespecting the game!" Like, dude, you got to shut up with that old boomer bullshit because this game is going to disappear if you continue. Baseball's scared. That's the real. That's the real catch here. They don't trust that if they turn off the older generation by allowing Acuna to flip a bat and pip home runs and do yeah. all types of stuff that older fans are going to leave the game but they don't actually trust that they can captivate our that they can actually get us into the game they don't trust that the only thing that they're really hanging their hat on right now is that guys that are 47 with a corvette in their front yard are going to watch the game of baseball well okay what can you do outside of that generation and their answer is nothing they haven't gotten my generation to watch the game they haven't gotten um especially young people i mean the 13, 14, I, I was watching baseball a ton at that point. A lot of people my age were, we were playing a lot of wiffle ball and we were in the game. We knew what was going on. That generation has no clue. The average 13, 14 year old right now is sitting on Call of Duty worried about season two coming out. They don't, right. they have no concern with sports at all. And that's baseball and it's right. across the board. So, so they just don't trust us. So but is it is, is it politics? Because look, with all sports in, in general, we were talking about earlier with, with Zlatan and those guys. Since the ratings are down in the NFL, they're down in the NBA. Yeah. And, and, you know, like I said, the Super Bowl was the best matchup you could get. LeBron in the Lakers was the best, you know, guy in the finals that mm -hmm. you could get during a pandemic. Those yeah. uh, ratings were anemic. Major well, they, it wasn't just anemic. It was anemic. It was a 20 year uh, low, right? Yeah, yeah. But, but here's, yes. the, here's the thing it, it's happening in all sports. NASCAR, NASCAR is in the, the absolute toilet as well. Um, the only thing that is up is is UFC, but it's it's also the only sport that I don't see any politics in. There's maybe one guy, that Colby Co Covington guy, but that's yeah. about it. That I don't I don't see any politics in UFC at all. Is that it? <coughs> Let me ask you, Gary. Is that it? It's it's the majority of it, and I I'd, I'd like to say it wasn't, and that the country isn't so. I I guess I wouldn't want to say closed minded about politics because if an NFL team says okay, Black Lives Matter and for me, I personally never supported the organization, but am I going to turn off my favorite team? Am I going to stop watching some shitty Eagles football over a Black Lives Matter logo? Probably not. So I didn't realize you were an I Eagles believe, fan. That's rough, dude. I'm, I'm an sorry. idiot. Sorry to yeah, hear that. It's, 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 I'm a fool <laughs> is what I am. I got all hyped up with the dream team when I was young. It was stupid. Big mistake. 
<laughs> but um, it really oh, is shit. about politics. And if you look at, there's one common denominator across all these sports, and it is if you got involved in politics, right afterwards, you did horrible. The ratings immediately dropped off, and there's going to be a multitude of reasons of why the, the ratings did drop. But you have to look at what is the main reason. And as soon as they did that, all the politics and the, the pandemic all happened right at the same time. So it's it's hard for them to pinpoint exactly what it is they did wrong. But when you have a – I mean, just think about it. If you have a sport where 95% of people who are watching baseball are conservatives, mm. and they're the blue-collar conservatives, and then you say Black Lives Matter – well, that means almost 100% of your base blatantly disagrees with a platform that you are, are you, you know what I mean? Like you're mm -hmm. announcing that you support. How can you expect that people are not going to turn off the game, regardless of if it's right or wrong, to expect that not to affect your ratings, I think would just be stupid. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. And, you know, uh, oddly enough, because you work for OutKick um, yeah. you know, uh, and Clay Travis, now, Clay went the other way during this, and he leaned into it, and it, it only seemed like OutKick got bigger during all yeah. of this. Did you feel that? Oh, my God, yeah. Yeah, you can feel it. You can feel it in the comment section. It's what happened is sports and politics, it really became polarizing. So now people are more fired up on the left, on the far right. People are moving the opposite directions on the spectrum. So now what we're seeing, if you see it at OutKick, you're getting the far right. Like you are getting a lot of people who are pissed off about sports. People who have turned off sports completely are coming to OutKick. They're getting their sports and their information from OutKick. We're like a news outlet at this point. But they used to, I used to be able to go to ESPN and all these places. But eventually when you start seeing political spectrums that you disagree with and you're almost being um, cast aside and, and, and chastised for, for having the views you have, they're almost forcing our hand, like they're forcing hands to for people to start their own networks and and really just be, have Fox News with a, a, a dabble of sports. Yeah, I mean, so it's, that, it's, that's what you're seeing. The top two headlines on ESPN right now are Zlatan talking shit to LeBron and then uh, yeah. that Loeffler, Senator Loeffler having to divest from the WNBA team. You know what I mean? It's right. It's like every, every time you open the front page of ESPN, there's some kind of politics shit on there. And that's it, look, the the the. Politics intersecting with sports is nothing new. I mean, it's been going on for a very long time. Um, yeah. But, you know. <clears throat> before, Not to this extent, Well, no, though. but before, though, it wasn't, it was, the, the athlete did the shit on their own time for the most part. I mean, look, yeah. ath athletes have campaigned for people for, for as long as athletes have existed and, and, and candidates for things had money to pay them to do it. You know what I mean? That's just how it works. Right. But now it's, now it's become the overarching narrative. I mean, it's not the NBA uh, uh, with Black Lives Matter on the side. It's like uh, it's like Black Lives Matter all the time. And the NBA is kind of like an afterthought. Like we're like it is. the idea that the idea that some <laughs> yeah. some court case that's actually going through the correct processes through the court uh, being decided in a way that you don't agree with can shut down the entire NBA for a couple of days. That's a freaking problem. ridiculous. That's a problem. Yeah, it's a problem for everybody. Yeah, and it was politics. They were always in sports. But the thing is, look at our major, our, our major athletes, right? You've got Tiger Woods and you've got Michael Jordan. Mm -hmm. Michael Jordan literally was like, I, I know Republicans and Democrats, they're going to buy my sneakers. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he's basically telling you to kick rock. Don't ask me questions about politics. I'll do it on my own time. Mm -hmm. And this is my main priority is winning championships. That's what people want to hear. Then you have and that means you can still do what you want to do but we don't have to dive into it while I'm doing my job. You saw Tiger Woods come on the scene. He was maybe 19 or 20 years old. You could see it in the doc. They asked him, hey, you know, are you going to speak out with black, black players getting in golf and the racism at the Masters? And he goes, dude, I, I'm here for sports. And his dad was disappointed. All these people were disappointed in him. It's like, no, actually, more people were happy with him than anything because they want you to show up and do your job. That's, that's part of it because you are an entertainer first. Mm -hmm. This job comes first. And right now when you're watching it and, and someone has a, a murder case and no one's happy with it, that the fact that it can just, what are we going to do? What do you mean what are you going to do? You think you think it, here at OutKick, if something happens in a court case and I'm upset that I'm not showing up to work or that any of our listeners today are going, I'm just, Gary's just so up in arms about what happened today with, with this uh, child support case. And it was just racist the way it, it went down. He's just so shaken up. He can't come to work to his nine to five. No, yeah. you'd be fired immediately. Imagine so that. I mean, it's crazy, it's, right? It's brutal.
it's brutal. So people, they have a right to be upset with how far into politics we've gone. But um, the fact that if somebody associates with an organization and it just completely shuts it all down, it's like, that's a little, that's a little much, but, but I, I understand why it's going that way. Yeah. Cause you know, if you're looking at it across the board, um, the one that I can't figure out is college football because there was no politics in college football this year yet. Um, the ratings were down for the national championship game itself. Now, is that because it's the same three teams essentially every single year for the last 10 years? I mean, you're looking at Alabama, Ohio State, and Clemson. Um, is it parity in college football? Or, again, is that you know part of the sports issue with kids? Mm, well, I, I don't – I they did have the stickers. Like, they had those little – those uh, banners yeah, yeah, on, their, yeah. Yeah. on their helmets. So, in a way, people are trying to figure out what is my sport doing? And people are really doing their research. I, I believe that they're, they're saying, okay, they, we know you have a choice. You're facing a lot of pressure because that's what it was. It was, it was a bunch of pressure from people who really had nothing to do with their ratings. That's what they screwed up. They were sitting there acting like, okay, if we don't support black lives matter, we're going to turn off some bait. No, no, no. The NFL didn't get involved in liberal politics for all this time because they had an idea that look, this our base is completely right wing we are associating with our base and we are going to maintain the image with our base and that's what kept their ratings to where they were at in terms of parody people don't care about parody we just watched the new england patriots when i mean we watched the patriots get to the super bowl a million times then we watched their starting quarterback the greatest of all time mm. go to another team get to the super bowl and it was like, and I feel like okay. everybody was pretty ha like the league, everybody except for chiefs yeah. fans was pretty excited about that happening too. Right. Yeah. I, and I was excited. Yeah. Not yeah, that, same, not that, I, not I don't that have people, a dog in that fight. Yeah, exactly. Not that people dislike the chiefs or care about the nobody. Their bucks don't even have real fans. Shit. <laughs> I mean, they've only, hey. been, they've only been relevant like twice in the last 90 years, but, but still, I feel like the entire NFL was excited about this happening here. So it's yeah. yeah maybe, maybe it's not the parody. I don't know. It, it seems it doesn't seem like it is. I wonder if uh, I, I what I think is because <clears throat> I've worked in politics and I study human psychology quite a bit. I feel like uh, being inauthentic is is a, the death curse if you're in any kind of industry, yes. but particularly in politics. And people can see when uh, just the juxtaposition between the way the media at large handles uh, the right side versus the left side right now. Like th this whole uh, kids in cages bullshit, and now not only uh, are the yeah. uh, not only are the kids still in cages, uh, they've built more of the cages, and now they're just calling it something else. I mean, it's people right. people can smell bullshit a mile away, and if you even if they're not acknowledging it publicly, they can smell it, and it's just like uh, it's like that person that shows up that's super fake, and they're talking about themselves yeah. the whole time, and everybody's like, all right, cool, we're just not gonna pay attention to this asshole anymore. I really feel like right. I really feel like it is ruining fucking sports right now. Like there's, there's a place for that conversation for sure. There's definitely a place for it. And major athletes that are representatives of their community and wealthy people should absolutely be involved in that conversation. LeBron, despite all the stupid shit he's done on the court, off the court is doing a lot of really great work for these people. Right. right? So that's where it should be though. It's not, I don't, I don't believe that shut up and dribble shit uh, that the Fox News dummies said before, but there is something to that idea that when you're on the court, do your job. And when you're off the court, do what do that other stuff right you use yeah, one we said a conversation yeah is that really a conversation though that's the thing is i don't believe that we're having a conversation about the wrong thing i actually believe we're not having a conversation at all mm. because how is there a conversation what i've heard is that okay we're going to be right wing we're going to discuss none of the things that you guys are complaining about mm. right that some of the players were upset about we're not going to discuss that and the ratings were amazing but then it immediately shifted to the NFL team saying, you know, instead of you guys have, I mean, you saw Drew Brees say what he thought and he was shit on. And then he cowered to the media oh, because he God. took so much flack for it. And I'm looking at it and I'm like, and some of the people coming up to me going, can you believe what Drew Brees said? I'm like, what do you mean? Can I believe what Drew Brees said? Drew Brees told you his opinion and you guys were so upset that he gave you his opinion that he was not welcome at the field think about yeah. that so if we're going to call this a conversation i think we have two different definitions of what conversation is and maybe it's not politics that are driving people away maybe it's one-sided politics maybe it's the fact that i'm going to be 
you're going to be critical of my entire existence if I think differently than you do. And maybe do I even have a platform? What happens if Joe Buck has a conversation? They say, we're supporting Black Lives Matter today. And then his uh, and one of his colleagues says, yeah, and, uh, and then says something conservative. Right. What would happen in that scenario? Yeah. He would be crucified and he'd be on a CNN split screen the next morning. So it, it's it's really upsetting to watch because it's not a conversation and they say well hopefully we can have a conversation soon i'm like it's really hopefully you guys can shut up and then we get our platform and and we we start talking about what we believe in and you cower this time it's really just the opposite yeah and, and you know all those people shitting on drew Brees was a lot different than obj um because that was obviously voluntary and he wanted that mm. he wanted um, that he yeah. wanted that did you guys have to cover that story at outkick yeah, I actually wrote an article about what it meant, why he wanted to do it and everything. Yeah, it you... wasn't, wasn't my idea. I got to look this up. <laughs> what, what did you say? It was, it was a scientific reason of why people want to get crapped on and what it is and why they do it. It has to do with, it was like childhood trauma. And there was all types of scientific reasons of why people want to get crapped on. So, yeah. And I'm not here to say that that's what he's, that's what he's on because I have no idea. I don't even, I hardly know if the story is true. Y y no one knows if that story is even close to true. I mean, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt it's, that it's not real, but I will say if it is real, um, people should do some reading on it. Well, yeah. So let me ask you this. When, when they walk in and say, hey, man. So it's, it's Monday. Uh, we got a hot story for you, Gary, that yeah. we need you to work on. What is it? Well, it's it's why OBJ might have liked getting shit on sexually uh, in the bedroom. Can you right. do this? Is there is there a conversation back of like, man, I don't really necessarily feel like doing that. Can I get another story about Bubba Wallace or yeah, something? Yeah, I mean, if that story really blows <laughs> up huge, then uh, just because of search engine optimization, you are forever linked with OBJ getting <laughs> shat upon, right? You don't want to think I am. You don't want to live that life. I told I him I don't know shit about shit. <laughs> you just know about I don't know drinking and knowing things, right? Yeah. Do you ever do you ever write about these guys and then they hit you back and be like, "Fuck you," because this just happens uh, recently right. to that ESPN reporter. Oh, yeah. Has it happened to you yet? Where they're like, "Hey man, what you said was false. Take it down and go fuck yourself." No, I actually I usually leave my articles open ended, and I ask questions, and that's the thing that most people don't do. They they just because they know part of their basis, they have a reaction to whatever it is they're seeing out there and maybe they don't like OBJ. So they make it a hit piece on OBJ, something like that, where you're just slamming on the guy. That's not how I write. That's not how I do things. So um, I like to ask questions. I like to have an actual conversation, which people don't like to do. People like to just be on one side of the fence and then just stay there. That's just not how I am. So, no, I actually haven't had any players. I, I've been very critical of some players, but they don't ever come to me because they already know. Like, I do my research. I know what it is that I'm talking about. Like, so they, they have no one stepped to me yet. So we'll, we'll see, though. Yeah. 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 Because you're a young dude. Like, they'll, they'll come yeah. for you eventually. Um, yeah. They know to <laughs> find me. <laughs> Where are yeah. you? Where do you live these days? Are you in, up in Philly or? I'm in Arizona. Arizona. Oh, wow. really? Well, that's yeah, good. When yeah. Cal when California snaps off and falls into the ocean with all their bullshit, you'll be able to have some beachfront property there. Hey, fuck. this place is California. Yeah, yeah, it's Calizona right now. Yeah. I mean, we already they. I think we already flipped for like the first time, and I can't remember how many years, thirty or forty years. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I mean, this place is. Um, I mean, we already saw with the minimum wage they raised that. So a burrito's forty-seven dollars, <laughs> a whole bunch of stuff. So you know, people don't really. You know, I'm waiting on them to learn economics, but you know, well, good luck California on that. Now. I mean, California, California's got 39 to 40 million people and they haven't figured out economics uh, and it's not going well. Right. But you mean they haven't figured out economics just because there's people worth a hundred million in the Hills. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I think that's what they think. I really do. Oh but, yeah. A hundred percent. Look, New York's learning the hard way now by getting, you know, all the millionaires are fleeing there and they're like, ah, oh, shit, yeah. who are we going to tax for all this bullshit? Um, you had a quote on your Twitter that I loved. Uh, the world was a lot better when we didn't have access to opinions of people we'll never right. see face to face. Yeah. I love that tweet of yours. Um, and I, I know it exploded for you. 
But it's true, right? I mean, all of these people that talk shit to you, and this is what you do yeah. for a living now, and mm -hmm. you're forced to fucking see it every day. Have you ever DM somebody and just be like, man, here's my address, and I'll be <laughs> here if you need me? I've done it to a couple people I know because it's people get very comfortable being disrespectful online. And that's just the thing. You don't get punched in the face anymore when you say something ridiculous. Cause that's the thing is even when I was a kid, I was born in that hybrid time where there was no internet when I was, when I was being raised. So if someone said something you disagreed with and, and you had a conversation and it went past the point of someone being disrespectful, I mean, it's coming to blows. There are no blows today in the internet. Really the blows are you get embarrassed on social media and then people will, quote tweet you and say all right all my followers why don't you go attack this person that's really what it is so for me i what that meant when i wrote that was just i'm thinking like why are we taking criticism from people who are literally doing nothing with their lives i mean literally speaking the, someone will say to me and i this is what i get most they'll say oh you're living in daddy's shadow you're not accomplishing anything i'm like well you know, I'm hosting a show with Outkick and I'm also hosting the biggest Lakers um, podcast mm. in the world. So, I mean, I'm, am I doing nothing really? So like, what, it, it, what are you, what are you supposed to do? Uh, develop a really good bat waggle and, and, and fucking hit 509 home runs. I mean, not everybody does what yeah. their dad does, I guess. And none, but none if of I that, do. Yeah. But none of that. But shit on my dad too. Yeah. And, and <laughs> yeah, I know. dude, I, I was going to bring that up as well. Like, do they talk shit to you about your dad to you? And you're like, Hey bro. I, it's my dad. I love him, obviously, but go talk yeah. shit to him, man. I don't have time for that. Yeah, and I just don't want people to accept criticism from people who are literally doing nothing. That if you look at social media, my dad will be taking shit from people all the time, so as will I, and you two will as well. It's never from anybody doing anything. It's never, it's a person with a fake profile picture with 22 followers following 1,500 people. And if you look down their timeline, it's just them shitting on one person and then hoping for a response. It's like, what is this brand of people? Yeah. It's a whole new brand of people. It is. I've see, I see, we see these people all the time on our pod. We, we get very few negative reviews, but usually when we get a negative review, it's some butthurt little turd. And they'll literally go down yeah. the list of all the shows on our network, the same person. Because yeah. we get a report every week and every week I'll right. open it up. And like once, once or twice a quarter, maybe uh, you'll see just in the same day, one person is these people suck. And then like, uh, these also, these people also suck. It's like, Oh dude, you really listened to all the shows, huh? Like you spent, yeah, it, it's four different shows. So you're telling me you spent, uh, five to six hours listening to all these, just so you could come here and review each one of them individually. No, you listen to nothing. You listen to You probably, right. you read the title of one of the shows. You were like, fuck these guys, man. They don't agree with me. Like, all right, cool, man. Let's do this. Yeah, and the, 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 other, the other hard part about it, and I'm sure you go through this at OutKick, um, you know, just based on the number of personalities and, and right. how controversial uh, Clay Travis is in particular, but like across our media network, we have 16 million downloads just audio-wise a month on our, you know, Tetherball Academy media. You cannot satisfy 16 million people with everything no. you say all of the time. So there is going to be criticism. How do you deal with it, especially with a guy like Clay at the helm, where it's like, all right, man, do you wake up and look at your Twitter and be like, man, is this going to be a shit storm today? Or Sometimes, and what I try to do is I don't look at it that way, where I say, well, I've got 10 million people. How do I appease most of the 10 million that I've got and appease my base? What I just try to do is be myself and actually think for myself and just say what it is I think all the time. And what in, what's going to end up happening is it's either going to get me in a lot of trouble or B, and I'm hoping it's B, is that I'm going to create a base where I have people that are not such pussies where they can actually just listen to someone's opinion and just say, wow, I disagree with Gary today and I'm okay with that. Right. Yeah. How yeah. often do you see that on social media? It's, it's someone disagrees with you and they go, that guy's, I hate that guy. I'm like, I hate LeBron. I'm like, why do you hate LeBron? Because he's always in the pot. He's in the pot. You already, someone's telling you basically they're a conservative by saying they hate LeBron. Okay. I want it to be a, a place for critical thinking where someone can blatantly disagree with me. And that's cool. I can bring people on a show where they disagree with me and it's fine. But now in social media, everyone's such, such whining crybabies with fake profile pictures. They can't even possibly grasp the concept that somebody might think differently than you in anything. Mm. <clears throat> yeah, I, look, because I hate LeBron for different reasons. Um, you yeah, know, I, the behind the scenes shit with the LeBron Taraj and all that stuff, like 
that went on for years that I heard. And I yeah. was like, Christ. And nobody that was knows, ridiculous. Nobody yeah. knows it either, man. Like, I mean, he yeah. was flying like 13 of his buddies to all right. of his shit. They were getting separate hotels to, to away games and right. everything else. Uh, and then his shot was wonky. Anybody who you can't give yourself a nickname either. Like King James. I don't, I don't think. No, no, no. It's not just King James though. Nickname. He got the chosen one tattooed on his body. Yeah. 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 Right. <laughs> Are you we, fucking we don't kidding like cocky me? People. Yeah. We don't like cocky people. People don't, I don't know what it is. I'll be honest. I didn't mind the chosen one stuff because I kind of get tired of people showing up and be like, you know, I'm just going to put one foot in front of the other. I'm just going to try my best. Mm. Hopefully it works out. In a way, sometimes I want someone to just show up and be like, you know, I'm better than you and I know it. Yeah. I'm just like way that. better than you. I like that. I like bat flips. I like hanging on the rim. I like fucking keeping your fucking hand in the air after you uh, hit a 28 foot three pointer. I like all that stuff. I, I like all of that. it. Look, my favorite athletes are Deion Sanders and Ricky Henderson growing up. Like, those are my dudes, right? Um, right. But, but because of their arrogance and fuck you, I'm better than you. Right. With LeBron, but they. I, I know this is going to sound weird as a, as a straight man saying this, but like Jordan, Kobe, uh, and Ricky Henderson, Deion Sanders, they looked sexy doing it. Whereas LeBron right. looks like my grandfather out there. Um, like literally mine it, with the Abraham Lincoln beard, the shot looks wonky. It never looks pure. And then the right. flopping on top of it. That's why I dislike LeBron. Um, but that's me. okay. Le yeah. I mean, LeBron got to the point is because he's, athletically he's the most athletic person who's ever been on a court yeah. and then plus he also works harder than anybody mm -hmm. else so the fact that he's working harder than anybody else and then he's athletically who he is i mean if you go to a live game he literally does not look like the same human he does not look like the same species as us no he, he is not he is a he is an absolute fucking monster and that's my problem with him he is the most physically gifted person maybe to ever play any sport and, or to and, be born yeah, yeah like well, that's he was born with the perfect body yeah, like for, for sure. the for the NBA, right. like Kobe but, and Jordan had to work it. But the fact that he still whines constantly and flops to me is like a very wealthy person picking up change off the street. You know what I mean? Like you don't need that, LeBron. <laughs> you don't need it. it it's, a, it's an addition to the game that weakens your brand and your character, at least uh, from an optic standpoint. And, and it's, it's kind of pathetic, to be honest, that, that he like, do what you got to do to win. But there's, uh, there's got to be some level of honor in it. And he's – I mean, no, nobody gets – I, I think he's uh, second in the league for getting uh, fined for flopping this year. Right, right. Which is no yep. fucking surprise to anybody, right? Nobody. I think Joel Embiid. No. I think Joel Embiid's the other one. Uh, like, there's there's no surprise in any of that shit. But still, I think I, I watch the NBA all the time. It is still a very exciting game. I think the not having fans thing is a little weird. I watched a game, uh, uh, a Pacers game the other day, where they had like four thousand fans in the in the in the stadium. <sighs> that that was better than usual. But it still throws it's me bombs. off. It still throws me off. They're not being fans. Uh, it's it's very bizarre to me. I, I don't know if it's maybe that. I don't know if it's the politics. I mean, I think so. The narrative at the beginning last year when uh, the players are talking about sitting out and blah blah blah, and and you know, you, you watch ESPN. I mean, Stephen A. Smith had some pretty good things to say. Max Kellerman is the biggest cuck in the history of fucking professional sports broadcasting. Uh, he's no one he's, deserves that word but him. Yeah, he is a yeah. piece of shit. Anyways, um, the narrative seemed to be that, well, NBA fans aren't the type of people that are going to care about this, so we're just going to go full BLM. That was a huge miscalculation, in my opinion. Uh, yeah, I, like, I, I personally don't care. That's not going to bother me because I'm a, I'm a Warriors fan. I lived in Oakland for like eight years when they sucked to the point where they were amazing. So I got to go through that transition, and I'll always be a Warriors fan as long as Steph Curry's there because of that. I'll watch right. every game he fucking plays. I don't give a shit. If, if the building's on fire, I don't care what the hell's going on. I'm going to watch. But there are a lot of people who won't, right? Yeah. So yeah, I, I just don't get And I, with the baseball thing, the, NL, the National League going back to not having a DH, again, is a huge mistake. I don't know why they're I doing I don't know that. what they're doing. Nobody wants to see fucking doing. pitchers hit. Nobody wants to see that. Why, why? No, not only that, it's different. In one league, they're like, yeah, in this league, we're going to have rules that make sense. But then if you disagree with the, the DH mm. – Fine. That's your own. That's your own opinion. Mm. But how could anybody possibly argue? We're gonna have one league be one way, right? And then the other league is gonna be this way. Yeah, it's, that it's, doesn't it, make sense. Because no. just just from now that now that what each team plays what twenty three interleague games a year, I think is that. Can you guys look that up? I think it's twenty three interleague games a year, which means at least for those games, 
one of the two teams is having to adjust their roster to make that work, right? Because they carry 13 right. pitchers and 12 position players, but now you have to flip-flop that to have a DH or whatever the fuck. It's, it doesn't make any sense. I do see some problems with it, though. Like, as a, as a hitter, if a pitcher can throw at you, but they never come up to the plate, that might present some kind of problem. I think it's been a problem in the American. You see more fights, uh, more, more star players getting hit by pitches in the American League than yeah. the National League for that reason. But I think there's a solution. I think it's a hockey solution. I think that let them fight. Universal DH, right? And if a guy hits mm-hmm. you and you charge the mound, you both get kicked out of that game, but no suspension. Let them fucking fight. I mean, you, do you remember like Kyle Farnsworth? Remember that fucking fight? Oh. Where, oh, he, yeah. where he speared homeboy and just started fucking slugging him. Uh, or Nolan right. Ryan lighting up Robin Ventura. These are some of the classic moments in baseball history. We have entire reels of Earl Weaver kicking dirt on fucking umpires. This is fucking exciting, man. That's why UFC wins. UFC puts two guys that hate each other, or maybe that like each other, but are getting ready to beat the Christ out of each other, right on stage next to each other and let them talk shit in front of everybody else. But somehow in baseball, it's like, oh, that's not, it's not becoming of the game. Motherfucker, you can sit around and talk about the old days, or you can move into the new days and keep making money. I want them to move into the new days because, one, it's more exciting, but, two, I want this game to fucking continue to exist because it's not I going to. Bryce Harper. Remember Bryce Harper charged him out, and I can't remember who he fought. Um, I think it was, it was Hunter Strickland. Yeah. The dude charges Strickland. the mound, and he's throwing – full blows yeah, okay yeah. that was the highlight of baseball for months yeah now when that happened i remember when it first happened i said that was amazing mm-hmm. that was exactly what i came here to see and someone told me well what happens if bryce harper if he if he scuffs up his hand he can't play for a couple days i'm like well you you guys are suspending his ass for four or five games anyways yeah so what's the sense if he's gonna miss four or five games like what is the sense in not allowing him to run out there you just drilled the guy with a hundred mile hour fastball Hey, if you drill the guy with a hundred mile an hour fastball, the only way you can stop pitchers from doing that is to go out there and beat their ass. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah, I mean, if, I if mean, it's just being able to talk shit isn't enough. Uh, you, you didn't like Randy Johnson wasn't talking shit. He didn't have a bag full of talking shit next to his bed. He's got a bag full of baseballs that, in case an intruder comes in, he's going to start throwing the ball at their face. Is that a true right. story? Can you confirm that, by the way, Gary? He's mentioned it in person before you of course you never know because i mean he's kind he's of a goofball yeah he, he's, he's kind a of, goofball yeah. <laughs> but that i, I can't yeah, i can I totally see him i can totally see him doing that though <laughs> what, what's I don't your favorite he's out here in arizona he probably has a gun oh yeah yeah easily uh what's your favorite sport like you know you're a sports reporter you have to cover everything yeah. do you have a favorite that you sit down and say all right i'm not missing this one team or this one events no matter what uh and what is it no particular team, but it's football. And I, and I believe it's the reason why football is as popular as it is, is that it's not just the parody because it ends up, there's really no parody in football. The same teams win every time, but the illusion that you really do have a chance because it's true. You actually do have a chance based on drafting players and how you draft late in rounds. I mean, we can get into all the details, but everybody understands that you're just a few decisions away from doing this thing the right way and having a run. That's not like that in baseball. In baseball, you're, you're two years away from sucking ass. Then you have to draft well. Mm. There's a whole process that takes 10 years to develop. In the NFL, you can kind of get rid of some crappy aging quarterback like Kirk Cousins. And then next thing you know, you draft a guy out the third round and he's freaking Patrick Mahomes. Mm. That's the way the NFL is. And they're all across the board. They're everywhere at every position. You saw with Aaron Darnold. You've seen it with any quarterback ever. Dak Prescott, all these guys. So it's the idea that you have a chance every year and you have that belief opening day, week one, is a great feeling. You don't get that feeling in baseball. I mean, I literally just saw a chart. They said the Baltimore Orioles have a 0.00% yeah, yeah, yeah. chance of making yeah. the postseason. I said, screw that sport. Yeah, well, the Are bottom, you kidding me? The bottom, yeah. the bottom third of the league for sure has absolutely no shot. But the middle third, I mean, look, how many titles – have been won in Major League Baseball by wild card teams. Right. Your dad was one of them, actually. He was the first yeah. in 97 to ever do that. So uh, yeah. uh, that team was great, by the way. Kevin Brown, fucking Cliff, what, Cliff Floyd was on that team, right? And Philippe Charles Johnson, yeah, it was a catcher. Fuck, that was And a all, all four fans that were at the game loved yeah. it, too. Yeah. Um, 
because yeah. there was about four people at all of those games. Um, it's interesting that you said football. Uh, do you gamble? Because sports gambling is now taking over sports. Like if you look at the, yeah. the, the scroll, it's uh, ESPN or everything else. It's got a spread now for every single game and everything. One of our biggest sponsors is mybookie.com. Promo code drinking bros will double your deposit and that's fine. Do you bet on the games? Because that's that's what we do hosting sports shows is like we bet on almost every single thing. Yeah. Are you in it? I'm in it. I'm less so in it without the fans because I, I felt like I had a, a, a real nice grasp, especially in the NFL. I was gambling a lot in the NFL and with, with the home field and all that. It was really helping a lot. I was doing great. And then as soon as the fans started getting out of there, I'm like, there are way too many away teams winning these football games. I'll have someone go into Seattle and like I made a pick, a big money pick earlier this year, and a team just went into Seattle and just mopped them up, just mopped the floor with Seattle. I'm like, this would never happen. So the fucking me, Rams. I, I bet that game. It was the yeah, goddamn was, Rams. Yes, yes, I lost it, it really all. Was. Yeah, yeah, it was tough. I mean, I, I was putting. I think I had like 1500 on that game, and it was just, it was, it was not great. Well, that's so, that, you should not be tough. putting that kind of money on the fucking Seahawks, right? Ever. They they're the worst against the spread of any team in the league over the last five years. Russell Wilson I, yeah. is a skin of the teeth kind of winner. Which let's let's talk about Russell Wilson for a minute. Is Corniest he, dude of all time. Is he? I can't send him to the Wilson Cowboys. Is he leaving? Send him to the Cowboys. I think he's going to the Cowboys. To be honest, I really do. I, do. I, I really do. Yeah, I think he's going to get traded to the Cowboys, and I think Dak is going to go I fucking somewhere else. Which will be interesting yeah. because Dak's not getting if he if if Dak gets the franchise tag this year, he makes forty million, right? But if he goes right, back yes. out of the fucking uh, onto the market, he gets whatever he gets. So he's probably yeah. going to get 30 to 33. I mean, coming off an injury like that, unless he really comes to a camp and shows out for them, how do you give a guy whose mobility is a big part of his game big long-term money? He's going to have to play a one-year deal somewhere probably, maybe two or three. But he will. Uh, if I were him, I would play a one-year deal somewhere. That's what I would do just to demonstrate I my totally agree. Again. But Yeah, I don't we'll know see. how he feels about his health. He, you have to, you, I guess you can't ask him. Only he knows. Yeah. Only him and his, his, a couple of his trainers know what he's going to be like because you right. know right when you're running around throwing the ball around you know when you're you're hobbling a bit you need every bit of your physical ability to go out there and be the quarterback that he was and if he can be that guy i mean you're getting he's going to get i know some people don't like dak prescott he's going to get 35 million a year mm -hmm. if he's healthy and he is who he is the cost of a really good quarterback mm -hmm. is that yep. it's about two million dollars a game unfortunately that's where we that's what we've come to but that's a reality. I liked him. I liked Dak being with the Colts. I actually love that fit. But now, obviously, with the Wentz thing, yeah. um, I mean, it's a good situation for Wentz. But I hope Russell Wilson gets traded to the Cowboys so yeah. it can just be the corniest, cheeseballest thing you've ever seen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it will It will be. But, I mean, honestly, despite that, I, I, I also think that Dak would do really well in San Francisco because of the way they have that team structured that's a run-first team strong defense right. he he will thrive in that kind of offense where there's not too much pressure on him uh but i i seeing russell wilson on a regular basis be able to throw to zeke in the flat and then amari cooper michael gallup and cd lamb all the time holy shit yeah they might score 35 points a game i mean that 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 is a very very sexy team with him with a with a guy that has the touch that he does that yeah. is a sexy fucking team. I mean, God yeah, damn. but it's still Russell Wilson. And he's going to put some fucking cheesy ass Instagram post up with Sierra. Oh, yeah. I he, cannot he'll stand oh, that yeah. motherfucker. Not only because he loses me money all the like all the time <laughs> with Seattle. They, they never cover the spread and all that shit. But his just bullshit of these weird photo shoots and posts and like, you know, the 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 baby when she was pregnant yeah. was photoshopped in the background of that beach. And you were like the fuck are you doing it, it, he's so calculated mm. yes he's so calculated the dude, dude goes how are you so good you know this is someone said this is such a great interview you know how'd you learn how to do all this stuff well um me and my dad we actually used to rehearse interviews i go who are you what who does that <laughs> the fuck? nobody's doing nobody does that <laughs> that's weird. nobody <laughs> that's really he was nice. like yeah in the yeah. shower i would practice and practice certain questions you know how'd you you had a bad game, you know, what's going on? Nothing, man. I was just supporting my team, and, you know, I trust him to bring this out. I'm like, nobody does that. Like, ta I, well, I, I guarantee you A-Rod does it or did it. Uh, like, A-Rod did it taxi driver style. He's staring into the full-length mirror, just like, you talking to me? Oh. Right? Yeah. yeah. God, the, him, the, the two of those, those couples together, 
I don't even know that they care about championships or anything. It's just how famous can we possibly get? Well, A Rod luckily it's, got one. I mean, look, the, all all the shit we talk about, A Rod is, is there. A, there weren't a whole lot of players that I enjoyed watching play more than him. Uh, really? Yes, dude. He fucking raked. Are you kidding me? He's one of the best offensive players in the history of baseball. He's like, just so cheesy. I, with, with it's the same way with Russell Wilson. I don't enjoy watching either of them play because they're just so corny. And you know they're going to go home and have, I mean, just the worst conversations of all time. I, with their but look, I like, I like greatness. That's what I like. So 98, when uh, McGuire, who is kind of a socially awkward guy, and Sosa, who is a complete basket case, right? Those, those are the two guys that are on the chase. But that's the best season of baseball ever in my lifetime. That, that chase for, for 62 home runs. And then what it became afterwards is the right. Best, by it far, was. by far the best baseball season of our generation. And uh, I don't know what would top it. I mean that that season of Bonds, where he walked like six thousand times, and people were literally giving. They were he got Buck Showalter intentionally walked him with the bases loaded one time. That's how fucking badass Bonds was. To get season. to Jeff Kent. To get to Jeff Kent, who should be a fucking Hall of Famer as well, right? I mean, Jesus Christ, unbelievable. So, uh, uh, that is that was great, and that was it was just like, but it was almost so surreal that it was just one yeah. guy that was that much better than everybody else. It's like, what the fuck is happening here? Like he would get one, he would get one pitch, Ridiculous. one, one strike per game, usually one or two strikes per game. And half the time he'd hit it out of the fucking park. He had 73 home runs, man. I mean, that's, that's wild yeah. as shit. I like how yeah. high you are right now that none of these conversations yeah. are connecting with each other. It's more that's your favorite moments in life. <laughs> he loves the steroid era is what it comes down I to. I do because yeah. it's the best era in baseball history, man. <laughs> I mean, come it on. Your, your dad, now, I, to my knowledge, he didn't do steroids, right? Right. Yeah. So the story is that he is on the Balco report, and the Balco report literally shows that he was – purchasing vitamins and this was when he was training with Barry for maybe two or three weeks in the off season this is in the I believe the winter of 03 now this is my dad has already come and gone from MVP seasons really I mean he was like top five in MVP like two or three years in a row with LA he ends up going to Atlanta he literally just starts training with Barry and my dad was rehabbing a knee injury well he put a cream and he was like you should be using this cream to heal yourself from this injury. And my dad was like, okay, well, what's in it? And so they really like, they were, they told him like, you know, what was in it? And my dad got out front of it pretty much immediately. And he stopped talking to Barry completely. Like my dad in Barry's relationship, even with his trainer, completely severed because of that instance. So my dad, when he did find out he was taking something, right? Quote unquote, it was like, okay, I've played my entire career clean. My dad, it's not like my dad was like these other superstars where he was healthy his whole life and he was just kind of, he just recover from hamstring strains in two weeks. No, my dad was, he was injured a lot in his career. My dad dealt with a ton of surgeries. So um, no, my dad, my dad never took steroids you know, under his, his own knowledge. So um, I, I just, it's obviously frustrating to watch my dad have that label on him, especially from the baseball writers who don't really know anything. They kind of just, they just listen to what one other person tells them and then they draw their own conclusions and they are the judge, jury and executioner, which sucks. Yeah. For so, now, I mean, look, no other way. there is the veterans committee. We saw what happened with Kurt Schilling this year. Look, it's not for Kurt Schilling. It's not about his, uh, about his play on the field or any kind of suspicion that he may have uh, taken PEDs or anything. It's about, some political opinions he's posted. I don't know what, yeah. the, I mean, Ty Cobb literally pulled a gun on an umpire at second base when he got called out stealing during the game. So first right. of all, first of all, he had a gun on him during the game. Uh, and then two, he fucking actually impressive. It. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Uh, he, he went spikes up in the fucking catcher's chest before there were real chest protectors, notorious racist. Right. I mean, shit. Right. How, how can you say anybody uh, deserves to be in the hall of fame before black and brown people were allowed to play? You know what I mean? Like th right. that, th there's so many uh, morally objectionable things that matter. And, and what, what, what Kurt Schilling said was that like, he thinks liberals are pussies. I mean, they are, that's kind of the point, right? And even yeah. if it wasn't true, how do, what does that have to do with the fact that he is one of the top five best postseason pitchers in all of history, right? Right. I mean, it's, I mean, I maybe, maybe top two, maybe it's him and Pettit. I don't know who else would compare to either one of those two guys. 
I don't know what I, I don't understand how someone could say, well, we know better now. We know better not to put someone like Ty Cobb in there. That's the argument you're going to get, right? Right. I say, well, do you guys not have the, the authority to take Ty Cobb out of the Hall of Fame? Because I'm here to tell you right now, I don't care what Ty Cobb was doing in his free time. I really don't. Like, is it a performance enhancer that you're only playing against white players and Hank Aaron's black ass is sitting over here right. playing in some other league? Yeah. And he's, he's way better than you over there in the Negro, Negro Leagues, by the way, way better than you, and he can't play. Yeah, Is that not a performance enhancer? I don't care what they were taking, greenies, whatever. The best players are not in the league, and they're not in the league because the league is telling them they can't be there. Right. So I don't know when we're, we're looking at these stats and going, well, Babe Ruth hit 327, and this guy hit three whatever at 1980, and you're going to compare the two like they're equal. They're really not. Right? Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, yeah, and has has your dad come to grips with the fact that he might not get into the Hall of Fame? He'll get in on the we've Veterans had, Committee for sure. We've had Pete Rose on this show numerous times, and yeah, you know he's he's finally just like, look, man, if it happens, it happens. I would really like it to, but he goes mm -hmm. at this point, man, I'm fucking seventy three years old or however he is, and he goes, I don't know if I'll be alive to see it. My dad's perspective is that he came to the field to put terror in his opponents. That's yeah. what he was doing. And if you can do that in any profession, you do something and someone says, we've got to deal with that guy. Mm. Who are we dealing with? We got to look at the lineup. Okay. You, you, you look at the lineup and say, yeah, he's in a lineup of Derek Jeter, Alex Rodriguez, all these great players. Let's, we, we need to figure out what we're doing with Gary Sheffield. My dad was hitting third in a lineup with A-Rod, Jeter, Bernie Williams, like all these guys. Yeah. Like Hideki Matsui, great players. My dad was the one they trusted to put third because he was the one who put the most fear into the opponent. And that's so it's understood from the players, all the pitchers on the other side, all the managers that he ever faced looked at my dad and said, that guy is a problem. Yeah, and yeah. if you do that for 20 years, that's what my dad was playing the game for was for that respect of mm -hmm. the players. So now that he's done and he's smoking cigars, golfing, have a, having a fun time, people walk up to my dad all the time that were playing people that were involved in the game and said, your dad was that, that was a bad dude. Mm -hmm. That's, that's a hall of famer right there. And that's what my dad, the fact that he has that respect, no matter where he goes, from the important people, not the baseball writers, he's completely satisfied. If he makes the Hall of Fame, he'd be very happy. He's going to be ecstatic because he knows it means a lot to us, especially the younger fans who who some, some people are, are really, they understand my dad might be forgotten in some ways because he's not in the Hall of Fame and there's not other avenues like a museum to showcase his skill set. Yeah. But he is completely satisfied if he doesn't make the Hall of Fame because he knows what he did. Well, he had a 10-year run where he had 300, over 300, 33 home runs a year and 105 RBI a year. That's, that, yeah. al that alone qualifies you for the Hall of Fame, right? I mean, 300 right. home runs in a 10-year stretch qualifies you almost immediately for the Hall of Fame because really it's about – it's not just about – uh, hitting 500 or getting 3,000 hits or whatever, getting 300 wins. It's about, are, were you one of the best players at your position during your generation? How can anybody question that this man is one of the best hitters of his generation? You know what I mean? It's, that, it it's absolutely insane. Also underrated, uh, one of the best outfield arms of all time. Oh, yeah. He had a fucking hose. I mean, he started, yeah, out, at third, he started out with third base with the uh, – actually, yeah. the second base, technically, in the minors with the fucking Brewers, but then moved over to third. He had a fucking hose on him over there. But – Better in the outfield. Let that man focus on hittings and not feeling ground ball because he's exactly he's, he can rake. Did you get to hang out with all those guys as a kid, like Barry Bonds and 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 everybody else? Yeah, we did a lot of we we did a lot of vacationing. I mean, we we did some vacations with Barry. Bonds. that was literally my first vacation. We went to uh, we went to Aspen with um, mm. Barry and Will Smith, and so that was that was literally the the group. So the I was actor like, or the football player? The actor. So wow, the, what was, was that like? like our, it was insanity. It was nuts. <laughs> and so, yeah, so we're, we're out there and it was like, I'm more impressed by seeing other people because my dad is just my dad. Everyone's like, what's that like growing up with Gary Sheffield as your dad? I'm like, do you remember walking down to the kitchen with your dad? Yeah. It's like that. <laughs> so yeah, it, yeah. it's not any different, right? I just see him as my dad, but all these other players, when I met Derek Jeter, I wasn't starstruck too much about all these guys just because I'd grown up being so young seeing them the only guy who I was really like that was with Jeter Jeter was the one player I was like okay he's larger than life he was a celebrity almost at the baseball field and I hadn't gotten that I mean even from anybody I mean I hadn't gotten that from A-Rod 
and that was even when he was in New York. I never got that feeling of where he was like God at, yeah. at the baseball field. And he was a Rod was unbelievable. And he they moved, he should have been the shortstop in New York. Mm. He was the best player on the team by far. It they moved him to third base because Derek Jeter was a god. That's just he, what it is. He Can't was man. I was dude. I was in New York one time. I was smoking in a club, which you could smoke cigarettes back then inside. And I get this tap on the shoulder. He's like, uh, hey, man, put your fucking cigarette out. And I turned around. I, I mean, I, before seeing him, I said, fuck you, dude. Like, everybody's smoking. And I turned around. It was Jarek Jeter. And he goes, no, nah, really? man, you're going to put your fucking cigarette out. And I go, I, I, literally, because I was like you. I was like, he's a bigger man in person than you think. He's actually he's humongous. Like, yes. And he's actually like 6'3". I'm 6'3". So we were eye to eye. And he's a, he's a mm -hmm. big dude. And I was like, yeah. oh, shit. It's Derek Jeter. Could I win in a fight? I think I yes. could have at that time, but I put out the cigarette out of respect for Derek Jeter. I was like, they would have sent you to Guantanamo Bay if you even threw a punch at Derek Jeter. One hundred percent. Oh yes. my god! Fuck, fuck that! <laughs> fuck that! <laughs> fuck Jeter! Any growing any grown man tries to tell me what to do in public, there's going to be a price to pay for that shit. I don't give a fuck how god he is. Well, uh, here's here's the I'll, here's I'll, the beauty of it. He had a game the next day at noon, so I think yeah. he just didn't want cigarette smoke around him. So he right. was inhaling it. Well, maybe he um, should you know, be maybe he should be play. home and not at a bar the night before the game. Get fucked, Jeter. I know it was three a.m. and it was a noon game. <laughs> and uh, I've told this story before. It was three a.m. It was a noon game, and me and my buddies bet the house on it because it was like, dude, they were all yeah. out at the bar the night before. Jeter yeah. went three for four. They killed him. The Yankees killed him. I lost a shit ton of money, and I was like, well, Jeter's God, because uh, I he is. He, is, he was still at the club when I left. He's, he's like, uh, is there any player in Major League Baseball history that's had that amount of success in the regular season and in the postseason that was that great and had that many big moments in both? I, I'm not sure if I could think of anybody. I mean, look, how many, how many people get to go to that many playoff games in the first place, right? Uh, no, he did it perfectly. Lot. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he did it perfectly. But everything from clutch hitting to the flip against, oh, I mean, oh. Jesus Christ, man. It's, it's, there's so many big moments from that guy. And he's good looking. Now I know why yeah. you hate him. Yeah. Uh, no. in, the, in the bedroom. Yeah. It, it, in the bedroom is where I'm most proud of Jeter. <laughs> My God, dude. The ass that guy used to wrangle, and it was before, like, you know, camera phones and all that shit. Mm. So he could get away with it. And the gift bag. Can you, is that story true with him giving the gift bag away? With a sign I don't know about the, the I, women. I don't know about the gift bag. I, I don't know. I honestly, that wouldn't surprise me. I, there's some, there's some crazier stories than gift bag, gift baskets. I'll tell you that right now. Not from Derek Jeter, but from some other players. Oh my who? God. Who, who do you got? I, I can't tell you who, but uh, there, there used to be, there used to be this player, I, I guess rumor has it. He would, he would come out of, he would come out of the bathroom with butt ass naked with yeah, you just come out butt ass naked with like baseball equipment on. That like, might out the be bathroom. that might be Greg Maddox. I'll tell you, I know from I. Uh, it's not Greg Maddox. I'll tell you that. Mike Remlinger used to tell me how Maddox would one he refused to manscape, but he also to be weird would walk around naked and and like pick out his pubes, like just to throw them uh, out and shit. And then he would like pee on people's feet in the shower, and they called him the Mad Pisser because Mad yep. Dog, like Mad Dog, Mad Pisser, or whatever the fuck. I'm yeah. like, man, that seems like a lot of fucking shit going on. Like he would be, they would all be in the showers together and everybody's obviously naked and he would just go like get as uncomfortably close to somebody and just stand there. Like apparently he's the biggest troll of all time, which is, I love that. People, shit. It doesn't surprise me because you have to understand like all these athletes, it's as narcissistic as it can be. So mm. when you run into people like Derek Jeter is an awesome guy, like away from the field, like he's amazing. A lot of these players, like there's narcissism to get to the point of where they get to, to be the level of athlete they have to be. They've got to be a certain way with their with their personalities. Yeah. So you get all types of just ridiculous stories, just people doing just ridiculous stuff. I saw Moises Salou. I remember I used to watch him at the All Star game. The dude was pissing on his hands. Yes, I'm yeah, like, yeah, that's what true. Are you he doing? Do that. I mean, look, no, he could have just taken Nolan Ryan's advice and soaked his hands in pickle brine if that's what he was trying to accomplish. But hey, you know, whatever. P pickles this is Fuck free it. and you can you can do it anytime a jar uh, mine, of pickles cost three dollars ross no no it's not worth it you, you can just piss in your hands dude you don't have to go down there. you don't have to drive anywhere that was before uber too that's true um, and uber eats yeah, my he, best he, friend <laughs> from, from college was a bat boy for the indians the cleveland indians uh -huh. uh, ryan ryan rextus and uh he was like 15 16 years old bat boy you know uh and he said during the middle of a game 
uh, he was peeing at the urinal, and uh, Jim Tomei sprinted in uh, yeah. and started pissing next to him. And he, my, mm -hmm. my buddy just locked up, and he was just like, oh, oh my God, I, I don't you know what to do or whatever. Yeah. Jim Tomei just looked over and was like, it's impressive, isn't it? That's why you stopped. Oh, God. That's why you stopped. And then he yeah, ran brutal. out of there and got back on the field. But I, in a funny way, he said it. You know what I'm saying? Where yeah. I was just like, yeah. Shit like that. I love hearing stories like mm -hmm. that. Um, Pete They're Rose told a story. Place. Oh, yeah, dude. Pete Rose, Rose told a story on here about uh, how big uh, John De or, uh, Joe DiMaggio's dick was. Yep. Oh. And he was oh, like, boy. dude, it was a penis attached, attached to a man is what he said. No, he said it was a man yeah. with a penis. Or, yeah, yeah, a penis with yeah. a man attached to it. Yeah, just walking around. Uh I, 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 yeah, those old stories are great, and the the fact that they're all fo like there's no video of it, so it's folklore, right? <laughs> like you, yeah. it, it gives you the opportunity to uh, uh, to give them the benefit of the doubt. Like it, it, when you see stuff on video, your your brain can play tricks on you sometimes. Or when you just hear a story, you know you can figure out how a reasonable person would have acted there, and it gives you a little bit. I think you feel a little better about it. So the fact that it's folklore and it's on print and not actual video is probably better, frankly. Like if, to hear OBJ getting sh shat upon, uh, to, to read about it rather, is one thing. Uh, to see it, probably not great. I mean, look, that, that one child's entertainer got past it, so uh, you know, it is what it is, but. There's a couple entertainers that got past it, but it was that, it was that woman's story that was so graphic, and I was like, all right, shit, I, I, I believed it. Uh, she didn't seem like, it didn't seem like a lie when I listened to that. Uh, now, now's the point in the show we get to the drinking bro of the week, which is somebody who has inspired you or helped you become the person you are today. Who would you like to give the drinking bro of the week to, Gary? Um, I've got to give that. I've got to give that to my mom. My, my mom, Lori List. She's out in San Diego right now. She's um, she's taught me really. I mean, my dad's the same way as well. I mean, they're very similar in that way. They've always taught me just say, of course, like try to regulate what you're saying, but say whatever it is you think. People are going to hate you. People are going to love you. Just do your thing. And sometimes I'll get messages about it and they're like, dude, you inspire me to be myself. I'm like, you, you should not need me at all to do that. Like, just be yourself, be your, you know what I mean? Just people are going to hate you if you say something that not everybody's thinking. So, um, yeah, it's just, it has to be my mom it has to be. That's awesome, man. Uh, dude, you were a blast to have on the show today. Tell everybody where they can find you. You can find me at Gary Sheffield Jr. on all platforms. You can find me at outkick.com. Um, literally every platform is the same. So if you're looking for me, that's where you can find me. Um, guys, thank you so much for having me. And uh, sorry I was late. I was uh, bad internet. Uh, no, that's fine, man. No worries. No worries. In, the, in the era of Zoom and all this shit, like, God damn, man. It's hard. Hopefully we get to see in person and have you in the studio one day in Austin, Texas. For sure. Yeah, I hope so, man. You know I love Texas. Hell yeah. I've got plenty yeah. of, uh, we got plenty of guns here to shoot. So just let us know when you're coming. Actually, uh, we're going, Love that. we're going tomorrow morning to shoot hogs out of helicopters. So, uh, anytime you're around, let us know. Yeah. Oh, so it was like, uh, yeah, it was like, God, what was that? What was that show? I was watching that. I think it was, it wasn't, it wasn't the Joe, right? The Joe exotic. Um, I can't remember what it was, um, but they were literally in a helicopter and they're going out. There's just like unlimited hogs to shoot. Pretty much, yeah. Uh, maybe Meat Eater, maybe it's Steve Ranella's show. I don't know if they've done that. Yeah, on Netflix. Before. Yeah, it could have been yeah. that, yeah. But the, yeah, I mean, pretty much any time you want, any day of the week, you could find somewhere where you can pretty much go up for free. Like the people that own the land will pay helicopter pilots to just take whomever that wants to go up there up to kill these things because they fuck up the land so badly. And they're right. everywhere. It sounds like an absolute blast. And I know all my... Uh, fans i i don't i probably have three or four out in san francisco right now that are just hating me for for saying this but i would love to go out there and shoot some hogs yeah let's do it <laughs> anytime man for sure hey guys thank uh, you so thanks, much man thanks for being on uh for d'anthony d'anthony hallway gary sheffield jr i'm ross patterson we are the drinking bros good night everyone